what we need to do is to get into a joyous mode to start being happy with what we have not with what we lost what many people don't know that there is a secret power and energy that comes from joy and this is an element that has been introduced by the mighty King David, the very first conqueror of Israel. He wrote in the book of Psalms, Ivdu es Hashem b'simcha, serve God with joy. That there is a certain power, there's a certain energy, there's a certain ability that we can pierce through the heavens that can only come through through joy. The concept of being in a spirit of joy is a most powerful energy that can literally, as quoted from the books of the Kabbalah, can break through barriers. So when we are able to put ourselves in a joyous mode, if we are able to find joy in life amidst the darkness, amidst the sadness, amidst the tragedy, but you are able to find something to be joyous about, you take that joy and you box it and you use it because that is going to get you much further than sadness, depression, melancholy. True, it is a conundrum that a person is faced with. When we are faced with a tragedy, how can we possibly be in a joyous mode? Here we are dealing with a calamity. Here we are dealing with tragedy of tragedies. How can we find within ourselves a spirit of joy? that type of a spirit, that conundrum, that paradox was just witnessed in Israel this past week. On October 7, Saturday morning, the tragedy, the massacre took away 1400 beautiful souls, took them away from their families, took them away from each one of us. This is enough reason to send us all spiraling in to despair, to depression. And absolutely, that's where we were when the news broke and when we woke up in the morning and to hear this horrific, unfathomable events, it threw us into a downward spiral. And you know what? That is exactly what the terrorists wanted to do. They weren't seeking just to destroy and murder and slaughter the innocents that were living in the borderline of the Gaza and Israel, but they were looking to hurt every single one of us. They know how close the Jewish nation is. They know how when one Jew gets hurt, it hurts us all over the world. They know that there are many upstanding humans who prefer life over death, that they would shed a tear when they heard of these horrific, horrendous, barbaric atrocities to human beings. Their intent was to destroy all of us, not just physically, that they did to 1400 of them, but they wanted to affect the 14 million Jews throughout the world. They wanted to imbue in us fear. They wanted to turn us into zombies. They wanted us to become depressed and despair. And we went through all that. And we're entitled to that. But we don't stay there. We do not stay there. And I saw that with my own eyes. Friday when the soldiers, 360,000 soldiers, as young as 18 years old, were recruited or volunteered from the reservists 
you should have seen them Friday evening as they are being mobilized and they said goodbyes to their families not knowing if they're going to see them again they were dancing to welcome in the holy day of Sabbath here are soldiers there were so many beautiful recordings of various battalions throughout the whole IDF that they danced in a circle dancing and they were dancing and singing to God Almighty that we have no one else to rely on but our Father in Heaven. And they were singing various songs and they were welcoming in the angels of Shabbat to protect them. They were dancing in joy because that is the call to order. Those are the arms that we need to fight our enemy. The very first Chabad Rabbi, Rabbi Shneur Zalman of Liadi, wrote a very interesting uh, uh, analogy to teach the concept of serving with joy and empowering the power of joy, the secret power of joy. And he spoke about a, a comparison to take a soldier who is fully armed but is in a melancholy, sad mode going to war versus a soldier that is barely armed but is of such great high spirits of joy. Who do you think is going to survive the battlefield? It is the energy, the power, the spirit of joy that has an unimaginable, invisible power that is far greater than all the arms that we have. And this is the call to order of right now. We need to snap out of the despair, the melancholy, the depression, the sadness that came to us from this horrific Holocaust that we have just witnessed, what we need to do is to get into a joyous mode and to imbue in ourselves and in our family to start dancing again, to start being happy with what we have, not with what we lost, but what we have. I know that from a personal level. I lost these two fingers and I have pain all day long 24-7. I have phantom pain from this finger and the nerve ending from that finger. And I could spend all day long thinking of what I have lost. But what I do is I think of what I have. And let's focus on what we have. We have a beautiful homeland country, a country Israel that we could say is home. We have close to 7 million brothers and sisters that are living there now. And we are praying for them. We are praying for the 360,000 reservists who was just mobilized, who are willing to put their lives on the line to protect the 7 million that are there. That is what we are to be joyous about. And it is through the spirit of joy that we are going to be able to pierce through heaven. When God looks, looks down and sees that our spirit is not lost, by our spirit of being in a joyous mode, by being optimistic, by having faith and trust in God and, and just snapping out of the melancholy, we are going to be able to accomplish so much more. Not only will our enemies see that they failed, not only did they fail at the battle line, they failed throughout the world. They will not take us down. They will not destroy us. They will not take our spirit away from us. We will not give it to them. We're not going to give them that win, but we're actually going to be able to embrace each other and find what to be joyous about. And just like King David told us, serve God with joy. It's very interesting in the Bible, there is the chapter that talks about what happens when calamity falls upon the Israelites. What happens when the curses and the opposite of life occurs? And there's one line in there that says, it's because 
We are not serving God with joy. A one-liner um, amidst all the darkness as written in the Bible, in that section. What well, our takeaway from that is that when we are able to use the power, the energy of joy, we are able to accomplish a lot more. And this is something which we need to be able to do. And it's not easy. It's not easy because, as we know, we have two forces within us. There is the positive force, the godly soul, and the animal soul, the evil force. And they are with a battle with each other all the time. The godly force wants you to be joyous, who gives you the spirit and the meaning to be happy, to be glad with what you have, to be happy, to be alive another day, and to see the good that's around you, so much to be happy about, so much to be in joyous mode. Versus the animal soul, the negative soul, is going to give you every reason why not to be. It's going to give you every reason why to be despondent, why to be depressed, why to be melancholy. The battle is on. Well, the battle is now on the center stage of the world. We need to take these moments of darkness and begin dancing with joy. Dance away in joy. Be happy with what we have. Be happy. Come on with a smile. Give your spouses and your children a great big hug and begin dancing to life. That's what our soldiers need from us now. Let's dance together. God bless you. God loves you.